Hello everyone, it's me again, um, your favorite anatomy technology facilitator, and this video is going to go over your first time using the Hollow Anatomy app on your HoloLens 2. So this application is for your first year anatomy learning, um, goes over all of your gross anatomy for the most part, um, and when you sign into your device and put it on correctly, um, it'll directly take you to the Hollow Anatomy app, just like that. It'll say Hollow Anatomy loading. For some of you, it might say um, end user license agreement. If it does give you that prompt, go ahead and accept that, and then it'll take you to this Hollow Anatomy main menu here. We have our four options as well as our our version number, um, and then our CHSU uh, name right there. So, um, before we start any session, um, if we're changing from one environment to another, so if we're in class and then we go home we always want to ch we always want to change our uh, ceiling distance so we'll go to pod setup by either using our touch um, or our air tap remember air tap is pinching your thumb and index and having your hand um, in front of the visor so we can see it um, once we have it once this tab is blue and selected we're going to set our, our ceiling distance and it'll prompt us to air tap two times one time uh, the first time, sorry, will be at the ceiling, so you'll move your head around to uh, gaze at that surface of the ceiling, then you'll air tap, and then you'll look down and make sure that this uh, anchor is on the surface of the floor and not under, and then you'll air tap once more, and now you have your ceiling distance right there. And then, after, we'll set up our pods. We have two ways of anchoring our holograms. Um, one way is a QR marker and the other way is a two point. We recommend the QR marker because it's more stable than the two point um, and we're going to review how to do both. So um, to do the QR marker you want to make sure that this selection is highlighted in blue and then it's going to tell you to look at the image marker. Um, it, you could have pod set um, before um, but you only, I like to make sure that they're at zero before setting up my pod for my session because if it has other pods set up like if it has two or three then as you move across the room it might move your hologram to where you were before so I like to clear all pods to zero then um, I'll scan this QR code here to set up the, the hologram so if um, you don't have a QR code at home um, or you want one for your home studying let me know so I can email you uh, that the PDF of a code uh, to print out, but in class we, we will have um, we will provide you with these QR markers. So to scan it, I want you to um, crouch and get really close to this QR code until it scans it, just like that. And once it scans it, it'll show you this um, white or even orange um, kind of outline of the hologram. And then there you go. Now you can start with your teacher or student session and continue with your Hollow Anatomy session. And that's how you set up your QR uh, marker anchor. So the other method is the two point. This is very similar to the, the ceiling setup because you're going to be air tapping at two points. Um, when you select the two point, it's going to be highlighted blue here. And then you're going to hit recalibrate. It's going to prompt you to air tap uh, the first one um, kind of far from you at a corner of the room. And then another one closer to you. And then it'll show up five pods um, in total. Um, the thing with this is as you move around the room, it'll move from pod one to pod four, and then pod five and, and three. So it'll move around if you're really active and if you're really far from that combined hologram. So that's why we say use QR markers because it's more stable than this two-point system. But the two-point system is is easy, right? It's easy to use. It's just two air taps and you don't need this QR marker. So it's up to you. It's up to you to choose um, what kind of anchor, anchoring system you want to use. Um, but keep in mind, whichever anchoring system you start off with when it comes to resetting your pods when you're in a session, it's going to affect um, how to reset them. So I'm going to show you how what that looks like. But um, if I were to continue and start a session, um, and let's say I didn't like where my hologram was placed, I would have to look up and look at that uh, clear all pods or reset pods button, and then I would have to reset that pod in the initial way that I uh, first set them up. So um, if I reset my pods and it and I initially set them as QR markers, I'm going to have to relook at that 
or, or, or redo that QR marker uh, process. And if I uh, started the session um, under the two-point uh, anchoring system, then I'm going to have to redo it using the two-point anchoring system. So I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to start um, my sessions with QR markers. I prefer that over the two-point. Um, and then we're going to go over the teacher and student um, setup. So when you're in ILS as a, as a participant, when you're um, going through... Um, the slides at home, uh, you're going to use different modes. So, like I said, if you're in the ILS, kind of participating, or you're joining a already open study session, you're going to use the student mode. Um, this will allow you to join a session that's already opened. Um, and here under sessions, it shows um, who has opened previous sessions. So, if it's a classmate, it could give you the name of their device. If it's a professor, they will most likely be renaming um, a slideshow. So this is what it'll look. This is what it'll look like depending on who opened um, a session already. Be careful with this. It's very sensitive. Sometimes, if you're pressing that, it'll uh, accidentally uh, have you join the session. So be very sensitive um, with with this uh, with this hollow anatomy main menu. Um, this downward arrow here, when you uh, air tap or touch, it lets you see who has opened sessions. And when you join the session, then you can start to see the slides. You can't manipulate or you can't use uh, much, you can't use any of the slideshow controls um, unless you take control. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. So this is mostly for, for joining that ILS lab session or joining a already opened session from a classmate. So now let's go over the teacher uh, mode. So here on the teacher mode, you can see that it gives you the option to view all of the slideshows that were published since the beginning of time right so uh, by tapping this downwards arrow and then using the scroll bar you can go down and see all of the slides that were ever published from our faculty so um, when we post slides we'll try to keep it um, within the top 10 so you don't have to be scrolling too far um, when we do our practicals we'll be renaming it so it shows up as the first option right there but I'm going to show you how to open a slide as if as if you were going to study at home so um, first thing we want to do is make sure our ceiling is set up, make sure our pauser is set up, and then we want to go to our teacher mode uh, tab, and then we're going to click this downwards arrow, and then select our slideshow. Before hitting start session, make sure that this name here is correct. Make sure you're on the, on the correct slideshow you want to view, because sometimes you might uh, hit... Um, you might think you're hitting your slideshow, and then it might give you something like this and give you the, the wrong name. So make sure before you hit start session, it has a correct name of your slideshow. So once you're ready to go, once everything's set up, you'll hit start session. Um, it'll kind of spin this preparing slideshow disk up just like that, preparing slideshow. And then your hologram will be up. So. Um, one of the great things of the teacher mode is our slideshow control. So to access that, I want you to, to lift up your less dominant hand. So if I'm right dominant, I'm going to lift up my left hand with my palm facing facing me. And then having this hand really uh, close, or not close, but in, in the direct view of the visor. So you have this kind of frame of, of sight with the hall lens too. So make sure your, your lens can see that your hand is up and not have it down there, right? Because if I, if I have it down here... Um, it's, it's not really catching that view. And if I looked at that palm, then it'll come up again. So um, this is our slideshow uh, controls. We have our next, previous, toggle cursor, and magnify tools, as well as um, it'll provide us with our session name, and it'll provide us with any notes that our faculty will add to this, um, to this specific slide. So next allows us to move, to move forward with our slides. Previous allows us to move back and forth or back, sorry, um, but these two are pretty much our, our forward and backwards um, controls. And then we have our toggle cursor, which is sort of of, of a blue um, laser uh, pointer um, that's controlled by your gaze. So if you uh, if you move around the, um, move around your gaze, it'll you'll see that, that dot move around the hologram. And it's just to clarify areas on the hologram. And the magnify tool, um, that'll be used to magnify a certain aspect of our holograms to really appreciate the detail or appreciate um, how it relates to other structures. So we're going to go over each. So we're going to um, use our dominant hand now to either air tap or to physically touch and go through that button to use it. So here I'm clicking or really pressing through the next as I move forward in the slides. So now if I want to go back, I'm going to press through um, or touch 
do that previous button to go back and forth between the slides. Next, a tall cursor to select. You're just gonna tap it once. You're just gonna tap it once, um, and now you can see that blue dot around the heart. Right. Um, this is something that your faculty can use to clarify a structure, or you can even take control of it and say, "Hey, I don't really get this. Um, what is this right here? Right? Um, is this the great cardiac vein? Right? Just for some clarification on on some anatomy." So. For a student to to take control, um, they're going to access this button down here. So right below the hologram, near the feet of the hologram, um, I, a student is going to come and they're going to air tap. So pinching your thumb and index. And if you have your volume on, it'll, it'll show you a little beep voice. And once you tap this, then you will have this blue dot um, and you'll be able to move it with your gaze um, to ask a professor, I don't know what this is, what is... Um, this artery here, right? Um, so it's very, very nice uh, to have when we're in our in our uh, ILS labs and students need clarifications, um, because other other options that our faculty do is pretty much reset their pod and kind of you kind of have to show them with your hand, which is can be confusing if their holograms aren't correctly synced. So uh, one of our other tools is our magnify tool. So our magnify tool gives us two areas: a focus area and another area. Um, to magnify the hologram. So you saw that um, by retapping the toggle cursor, it kind of goes away, right? So it's gone, and no one has control over it. If you are in a in a place where you want that control back, um, and you and you're not able to to retap the tap the take control, all you need to do is to tap it once more to turn off. And when you turn it back on the second time, you regain control. Okay? Let's turn that off. Let's turn on magnify tool. So here we have two, two, uh, two spheres. So this is our, our magnify sphere, and this is our focus area, right? So with our uh, magnify sphere, we want to pinch it and kind of grab it as if it were a physical ball or sphere. So pinching it to move it around, to place it on this, on, on any area of our hologram that you want to show. So I'm going to show, I want to show the inside of the heart, right? So I'll place it right there. You can also air tap and move it around. It just depends on how comfortable you are with the gestures, right? So I use um, this kind of touch or grab method because it's more accurate for me. And then you'll move this focus area to wherever you want, and you can move this in any aspect, right? So if we had the heart supine, right, someone laying down, um, we would have it like this, right, laying on, on their back. We would, if we want them prone, then we would put the heart as if, it, if as if someone were laying on their stomach, right? And we can make this really big or really small just by pinching two uh, parts of our hologram and either bringing close our hands or separating them apart. So if we move our hands apart, it'll it'll grow in size, and if we if we put our hands close, it'll shrink. So we can do this to uh, show any internal structures that are that are really small so like some of these uh, valves inside the heart you can't really see um, if you kind of just walk into it right it's really hard to see it but if you make it really big then you can see some of the papillary muscles of the heart right and really uh, appreciate the coordinate tendine and all of these internal structures that, that make your heart um, kind of pump blood so that's how we use our magnify tool. Again, if you have a question, you can, a student can always take control and move this magnify tool around and ask, okay, what, uh, I have a question about the aortic valve or the pulmonic valve, right? And kind of uh, magnify and show uh, a faculty um, kind of where they need clarification on. So <coughs> student can always take control of those, two, of those two slide controls, only the tall cursor and only the magnify tool, right? So now I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to go over two kind of common issues that we have in class where students either say, I can't find my holograms, or uh, how do I uh, restart a hollow anatomy session. So the first uh, thing is maybe students forgot to, um, they forgot to set up uh, a type of, of anchoring system and they just joined a session real quick, or um, they forgot to set up um, they forgot to set up a new pod for their new environment. So let's say uh, 
I'm over here, working over here, and I can't find my hologram. What do I do? So I want you to look up to the ceiling, and you'll see these two buttons here. So I want you to press clear all pods and not reset pod, because when we reset our pod, it'll still take in mind our previous pods that were set up. So let's say I reset my pod, I put it here, and then I'm kind of moving around, walking around, viewing my hologram, and then I look over here, and then it moves. And let's say, oh, but I'm over here with my equipment now, and I want to study over here. So with reset pods, it's always uh, bound to move back to its original place. Uh, and it'll move around even more if you have multiple pods set up. So that's why I say clear all pods before you start your hollow anatomy session, and you only have one pod set up. So I recommend always to use clear all pods. So you're going to have your hand in front of your visor. You're going to pinch. Um, your index and thumb with the air tap method and then like I said before you're um, going to reset your pod using the initial method of anchoring so um, when I before I started that hollow anatomy session I was joining uh, using the QR marker if I were to join using a two point it would not say please look at marker but it would say air tap um, at two corners of the room right so because I started QR marker it's gonna have me clear my pods and reset my pod using this this uh, QR marker. So now I've just reset my pod and now it won't move around the room and then I can um, view my holograms and study anatomy stress-free. Um, so that's how you reset your pods. You're gonna look up above the hologram on the ceiling and you'll see these two buttons and then you'll air tap on clear all pods, right? And then <coughs> the last the last thing that students ask is <coughs> sorry, how do I uh, close this hollow anatomy session. So hollow anatomy has yet to have a, a back button on their their uh, main menu uh, or their side control men side control menu. And when I mean back button, I mean um, not previous, but being able to to just kind of go back into the the main uh, hollow anatomy main menu. So they don't have that yet, unfortunately. So um, because our devices are on kiosk mode, we're gonna have to um, restart them. So I made videos on how to restart your lens, but real quickly again, um, to restart your lens, you're going to um, to press this power button above the indicator lights, um, and then you're going to hold this decrease volume button on the right side of your temple when you're wearing your lens. So you're going to press and hold them together for about, I would say, 8 to 10 seconds until you see these lights strobe or kind of blink. So here we go. We're going to press them together. And then we're going to wait for this to restart. And then if you have your volume on, it'll, it'll, uh, you can hear that powering on uh, sound. So the, if you guys saw that, it kind of turned on and off real quick. And then when we check it, we'll see that it's restarting. The Windows logo comes up, and then it'll have us re-sign in. So that's the only way we're able to restart a hollow anatomy session is by restarting your, your lens. So... It's going to turn on again, it's going to have you sign in, and then it'll kick you back to your hollow anatomy main menu. So that's, um, these are the basics you need to know for your first time using hollow anatomy. And then if you have any questions, please ask me for support. We have our faculty in our ILSs who are also experienced using these, so they can always help as well. If you have any questions, please email me, and I'll be seeing you all very soon. I'm very excited. Welcome, class of 2027.